Hi everybody! Welcome to another installment of what is my YouTube video saga. I'm just kind of lounging around the house. I'm reading a really great book. It's called The Greatest Show on Earth by Richard Dawkins. I highly recommend this. Um, I'm drinking my pineapple juice and I'm eating my freshly baked peanut butter cookies. Mm, they're so good. Today I want to do a video that was requested by a follower, but I thought that it was a great um, topic of discussion, so I decided to go through with it. We're talking about the skin's moisture barrier. Now you might know a bit about your skin. Um, the outermost layer of your skin is called the epidermis, and that is essentially the moisture barrier that we're going to be talking about. So, we've established that the epidermis is the outermost layer of the skin, but the epidermis itself actually has several other layers as well. The outermost layer of the epidermis is called the stratum corneum. Now, the stratum corneum makes up the moisture barrier, that is, keratinocytes that are dead skin cells, and epidermal lipids that form together in a, like a brick and mortar type deal that forms a nice protective layer over the body. This combination um, prevents transepidermal water loss, so it keeps the moisture in the skin, it protects against invading organisms, allergens, chemicals, that kind of thing. Basically, it's like the shield for your skin. So for example, take this sponge as an example of our skin. The top green layer is the epidermis, the yellow bottom layer can be seen as the dermis. Um, this plastic bag can be seen as the outermost layer of the epidermis, which is the stratum corneum on top. So, thinking of this as your skin, think of how hard it is to lose moisture when the moisture down here has a protective barrier. Not only does this barrier keep moisture in, it prevents damaging organisms from going into the skin. So, as you start damaging the stratum corneum, this starts eroding, blah, 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 and then away it goes. And then you can see how much easier it is to lose moisture out of the skin and how much harder it is to protect the skin from damaging chemicals, organisms, and the like. So when this moisture barrier is damaged um, or compromised, you're going to notice some things about your skin. It's going to be dry, itchy, rough. Um, it's going to be more prone to infection, it's going to seem rough and dull, but that doesn't mean that your skin has to be dry for you to have a compromised um, moisture barrier. You could have overly oily skin, but your skin still feels dry, you know, where your skin looks oily and, and shiny, but it feels tight or it feels rough, particularly after cleansing. You might also notice that you get a lot of congestion in certain areas on your skin where that moisture barrier might be more broken down than others, um, particularly in the form of blackheads. That's uh, one sign of a damaged moisture barrier. Um, and another sign that I find is kind of a dead giveaway is when you are washing your skin with a very you know bland cleanser or moisturizing your skin with a very bland moisturizer, no fragrances, no dyes, anything like that, and it stings your skin that's the sign that your moisture barrier has been damaged and that it's the pain and the inflammation is a sign that it needs to be repaired. <gasps> moisture barrier um, can be damaged in a number of ways. It can be damaged by smoking, it can be damaged by drinking, your environmental factors, a poor diet, but I find that the most common culprit is typically what we put on our skin because it is in direct contact with our skin and it does tend to be damaging in ways that we maybe don't understand. So I, I would probably venture to guess that the number one culprit is a cleanser. Um, a lot of the times people will reach for proactive and not realize how damaging it really is to the skin's acid mantle. And so stripping cleansers, any cleanser that leaves your face feeling tight and dry is not a good cleanser. Your face shouldn't feel tight. It should feel very clean, but it should feel comfortable. Like, you should still moisturize afterward, but you shouldn't feel like, oh, I need to get a moisturizer on my face or I'm going to get a crack in my face if I make a facial movement. That's not normal. Because everybody's got individual skin types and um, individual sensitivities, other things you might want to look out for are, again, fragrances or dyes in, in your products. Some essential oils can be damaging, despite the fact that they may be 
ideal for skin um, lesions, it might still be best to avoid certain essential oils. Tea tree oil can be very damaging to the skin, especially when it's not used properly. And a lot of the times people don't know how to use tea tree oil and they'll use it and it will damage their skin. And it's very easy to see when tea tree oil has damaged your skin because it will get red and inflamed and cracked and burned and that is not a good sign. So now that you know what, um, a little bit about your skin and you know kind of what can cause a damaged moisture barrier, it's time to kind of discuss what you can do to heal that moisture barrier or at least begin the healing process for your skin. One thing I think is very important to consider is how much water you actually drink. You have to think of your moisture source. Your body nourishes itself from the inside out. So if you're not getting in enough water, either through drinking it or through the foods you eat, your, your body is going to suffer, your skin is going to suffer. You need to stay hydrated, that's super important. But it's also important to think of the moisture from outside factors. If you live in a dry environment, you might want to consider investing in a humidifier and running it at night while you sleep. A lot of people notice huge improvements in their skin when they add a humidifier in to their daily routine. In terms of what to do and not to do for your skin, um, avoid things that are, are damaging or too acidic, such as um, lemon juice. Uh, avoid things that are too alkaline, such as baking powder. Those things can damage the acid mantle to your skin very fast and very easily. Just avoid them altogether. It's also equally important what you put on your skin. So you want things, um, a humectant for your skin. Now your moisturizer may have this. Most of them do, depending on if it's the moisturizer that's irritating your skin or not. You might need to get a new one. But uh, two humectants that are great to look for are glycerin and hyaluronic acid. Um, some people use squalane from olives. Uh, I don't have a ton of experience with that. But in my experience, glycerin is very common. Um, but hyaluronic acid seems to be the preferred kind of serum to aid in the replenishing of the moisture barrier. Hyaluronic acid is particularly great because it's so light and thin and versatile that um, it can carry up to a thousand times its own weight in water. So it's a fantastic humectant, particularly if you have a damaged moisture barrier as well. That is best applied to the skin like right after a shower and especially if you're applying it as a serum, apply it right after a shower when, you know, the steam's got everything, all the capillaries are running and apply a nice rich moisturizer on after it such as CeraVe. So I'll link below to a place you can get the hyaluronic acid or simple glycerin because you may not live in a place where they're easily accessed so I want to make that easy for you. So I feel it also goes without saying, though I'm going to say it anyway, that you need to kind of drop the products that you think are irritating your skin. So if you're using a new cleanser and you feel like it's damaged your skin, you need to stop using it. That feel like it goes without saying because you're going to continue damaging it and even though you're trying to heal it you're still going to go the wrong way damaging it if you keep using it so opt for a pH balanced um, cleanser opt for pH balanced moisturizer that kind of thing and it typically takes about 14 to 17 days for the moisture barrier to repair itself I would shoot high on that number and give it about 20 days before you you know kind of poo poo uh, a new product that you're using Below, I'm also going to list a couple of pH balance products that you might want to use for your skin or consider adding into your, um, your regime. Um, one of those is CeraVe. I find it's a great, rich moisturizer, but it's not, like, a too heavy. It's not ultra-moisturizing. It moisturizes perfectly, and it has great occlusives and humectants in it for your skin to repair that moisture barrier. Um, P uh, tamanu oil is also relatively pH balanced, although plant oils are hard to determine their pH. Tamanu oil is generally a safe bet, so is rosehip seed oil. Um, jojoba oil, Yes to Tomatoes face wipes are pH balanced. Uh, the Honest Company, Hyaluronic Acid, all great pH balanced examples. Usually they say on the label, so I mean, it's trial and error. Just because one thing worked for somebody else doesn't mean it will work for you. You need to try it out for yourself, but regardless, I'll have those listed below just in case you want to check any of them out. So, to summarize quickly, skin, dermis, epidermis, moisture barrier, damaged moisture barrier, bad. So, 
do those things, don't do those things, you know, stay away from the acidic lemon juice, stay away from the baking soda, stay away from the stripping cleansers, add in the hyaluronic acid, drink more water, do all those kinds of things, and hopefully your skin will be well on the way to recovery. Thank you for watching, as usual. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Vegan Acne Sufferers, and you can also check out my blog, www.veganacnesufferers.blog.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, or thumbs down if you didn't like the video, and leave me any comments or questions that you might have. Thanks.